Okay, so today we're gonna to talk about time, which is a big one for me, and I'm pretty sure it's a big one for everyone because more and more we all know that nobody has enough time. I mean, that's just sort of a blanket assumption we can make about everyone listening. And we're gonna talk about the concept of time in the series on happiness and having a balance of giving and receiving time. So since we all feel like we don't have any time to give. How do we receive time and how do we have an abundance mentality about time? Yeah, it's, it's great. And, and obviously we're, we're just going to scratch the surface in this area of time and probably worth series down the road to talk a little bit more about. But I think you, you nailed it uh, because we all feel like we don't have enough time. Mm -hmm. And I think that that feeling of being rushed and that we don't have enough time is one of the core sources of our frustration and unhappiness. Mm -hmm. So this whole idea of time scarcity, which we'll, we'll unpack a little bit, I think is critical to, uh, to our experiencing joy and happiness. And if I were to just try to draw an example of that, I would ask someone to compare their day before a vacation, a long vacation, mm -hmm. with a day in the middle of the vacation. Both are 24 hours long. The first, that day before a vacation, is filled with stress and speed and the feeling like I don't have nearly enough time to do everything that I want to do, frustration, uh, tension, all sorts of things. That other day in the middle of the vacation, if we're, if we're vacationing right, feels so full and boundless and free and enjoyable. And they're two different experiences of the exact same 24 hour period. So this idea of whether we're living in scarcity with regards to our perception of time or whether we're living in abundance is absolutely critical to this uh, subject of happiness. Boy, I don't really love that analogy because in the day before vacation, I at least have like a million things to get done. And when I'm on vacation, I don't have anything I have to get done. And my biggest goal for the day is like getting through my beach read, really, and yeah. maybe fixing dinner. So what about this? Like, how do we bring an abundance mentality about time when we have a lot to do? Yeah, and, and that gets to, into a practicality. I think we'll kind of come around to uh, some of that. Okay. But if, if I could, I'd love to kind of just step back and uh, talk about the problem with even thinking about time uh, as being abundant because okay. there's no resource. Uh, money is, is maybe one that kind of comes to mind, but the very few resources that we think of that are so clearly scarce yeah. as time. I mean, we know that time is ticking just as we're talking right here and that the time will come when our time runs out. Yeah. And so we know that time is running down. It, there's nothing it seems like we can do to expand and make time endless. And so therefore, there's a mentality that, well, we are constantly trying to make the most of time. And we're trying to squeeze as much into time because it's an unexpandable resource. Mm -hmm. And so time scarcity doesn't seem like an issue of mindset. It seems like an issue of fact mm -hmm. that we're struggling with. So therefore, uh, how, how could we begin to think of time as abundant? Mm -hmm. uh, and I really understand that mindset, but I want to, I guess, challenge. And this is, this is a challenge that comes from uh, thinking about this a lot mm -hmm. in, in the reality of it. And it's a challenge of faith, but uh, that I, I think is important. And that's that 
as a person of faith, as a, as a Christian, I believe that time is absolutely, uh, unmistakably abundant. That is, I believe in eternal life. I believe that the time, yes, will come that I'm going to die. And I don't know whether that's tomorrow or 30 years from now or when it's going to be. But that's not the end. In fact, that's almost like the beginning for me. So I have all the time in the world to do anything and everything God wants me to do right now. I don't have to worry at all about running out of time because hmm. that's all in God's hands. And I have eternity behind all of this. So I can completely relax with time. I don't have to worry about it at all. I'm completely free from the restraints of time scarcity. And I really believe that is the right, the accurate way of living. Mm. Now, I know a lot of people would say that's pie in the sky and, you know, uh, that's, that's not being real. But I believe it's a path to, to, to joy. And I actually believe it's more true than believing that, you know, some arbitrary period a few years down the line is the end of everything. Yeah, I can see how that mentality would really be freeing for you because you're a very motivated person and I know that you have a lot of things you want to accomplish. And so the idea that you don't have this scarce amount of time that you have to fit everything you want in, I can see how that would really like take the pressure off. Yeah. And um, I, I, you can even see how that scarcity mentality will impact people when they have sort of their midlife crisis. It's this idea of, I only have but so much time left, so I need to do all these things that I wanted right. to do, and some of them are reckless, and how that's, that scarcity shows up in the midlife crisis. Absolutely. I also can see another side of it, though. You know, there's some, I think it's a country song that live like you're dying, you know, and I... Whenever I am close to someone who's died, there is a clarity that comes when you think about what matters in life, when you're in proximity to death. It's like this, it strips away some of the ways we waste our time, is what I found. And so while I can see that it's really beneficial to have this abundant mentality that we have all the time in the world, or we have all this time after this world in a sense, um, I also think that it's helpful to think like, what, what am I going to care about when I die? What am I going to care about that I did with my time? And in some ways that frees up our time because we find that a lot of what we're doing, I'm not going to care about. And so why am I doing it now? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I think that's true. And I think that is a great, uh, important kind of uh, corrective yeah. for the way we spend our time on what in the moment seems to be important, but down the line will, you know, think is very unimportant. You know, it's the, the old uh, saying of nobody on their deathbed wishes they'd spend a few more hours in the office. Sure. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. So how do we receive more time or more min of, of a mental model of an abundance of time? Yeah, and, and I think I think the beginning point is uh, is this step of faith of believing that time is abundant. Hmm. And so one of the things we did an episode on this a couple of years ago that that uh, has been really helpful for me is viewing all of life as practice, viewing all of life as preparation, mm -hmm. and that takes a tremendous amount of pressure off things if I'm always just practicing for. Uh, for better things ahead, even if that's things after I die. Yeah. You know, it, it's a great way of kind of living into abundance. This is all just getting ready. It's all getting ready for, um, for down the line. But if we begin with realizing that we have all the time in the world to do everything that God wants us to do today, then that can help relieve mm -hmm. so much pressure because 
many of us, most of us, I constantly come into day into a day thinking there is way more to do than I can possibly get done. That is, there's more to do than can be done. That's that's not true. If I know that that because time is abundant, mm -hmm. and because God is in our time, that there's all the time in the world to do everything I want to do. It allows me to slow down. It allows me to do things with my time that I would not otherwise mm -hmm. do. And that's some of the practical takes takeaways that, that we want to touch into. Well, I really struggle with time. I personally think I struggle with time way more than you do because <laughs> I think you manage your time really well. It's one of your little superpowers. <laughs> Actually, it's not a, super, a little superpower. I think it's a big superpower. But I really struggle with scarcity mentality with time. And the biggest shift I've noticed in growth in this area for me is when I'm starting to feel that um, tightness or that grip or that rush on time for me to say, I have enough time in this day to do everything that needs to be done. And for me, faith is a real integral part of this. Absolutely. Um, I can't really have a healthy relationship with time without help from God. And the reason why is that I have to believe that God has given me enough time to do everything that he has for me to do. And if I don't have enough time to do it, then I'm not meant to do it in that day. And those parameters, it's almost like these, these rails that keep me from going off the cliff. And I also do this other thing, these two things that you've taught me, all of life is practice. So whatever I'm doing, whatever I'm working on, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's not the ultimate. I'm just going to do it. I'll make some mistakes. Some parts will be good. I'll mm -hmm. learn from the good parts, the bad parts I'll learn from, and I'll go from there. And it just helps me be a little more free and loose, you yes. know, play mm -hmm. loose. And um, that frees up some energy. And when I play tight, like this is the ultimate thing, I've got to get it right. I don't have enough time. You know, it's like an athlete. When you're playing tight like that, doesn't you work. waste all this energy and it doesn't work. So I have learned to hold things a little bit looser with time from that concept of all of life is practice. Mm -hmm. Not all of everything we're doing is ultimately important. Right. And the other thing you taught me is that when I'm starting to feel rushed, I need an immediate corrective to help me slow down. And you taught me that just start moving slowly. Yes. You know, like when I'm getting ready, if I'm rushed and I'm thinking, oh, I need to do this, if I just like brush my teeth really slowly, or if I'm feeling nervous about getting dinner ready on time and that we have to be places, I just start cooking really slowly and walking really slowly. And it's this way that I can remind myself in the middle of the day that I have enough time. And if I don't have enough time, I'm not meant to do it. It's so good. I absolutely love that. And it's so great. And it's so counterintuitive. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is so true that, you know, when we're feeling incredibly pressured and rushed, if we would just slow down, yeah, I mean, meaningfully, exaggeratedly slow down, it, 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 it's, it gets everything back into its right place. And then we can move on. But it's the opposite of what we want to do. Right. It's the opposite of what we want to do. But the, the thing I'm learning is that that hamster wheel concept, there's a lot of wisdom in that hamster wheel concept. They, they, you know, there's that phrase, oh, I'm just spinning on a hamster wheel. Right. Well, the faster the hamster wheel goes, the, the faster you have to run. Yes. So if you find yourself rushing in a day, you are creating a life where you're trying to accomplish more than the day permits you. And then you have to maintain that pace the next day. So it's like, if you have time to set more appointments or respond to more emails or do more things, it's almost like you're creating a pace that you can't maintain. Exactly. And the ha hamster wheel will just respond by continuing by to do. go faster and faster. Yeah. So there, there are two things, and you, you touched on one that I think is so great of, Kind of intentionally slowing down yeah. um, that will change that. And it's it's an action that is claiming that abundance mentality mm -hmm. time. Another 
example of the same thing is what, what I would call learning to punctuate time. Hmm. And by that, I mean having regular practices that we get off the hamster wheel. Hmm. So, you know, if you're on the hamster wheel, it's always going to be moving. And it's going to be getting faster and faster. Mm -hmm. And the only way out of that is you get off the hamster wheel. Mm -hmm. So I like to make sure, for instance, that every morning starts off the hamster wheel. That I take, um, I take plenty of relaxed, unrushed time every morning to start the day. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter whether it's a really busy day or not, I begin the day in an unrushed time. And that's time with God. That's time for me to just get my feet settled. It's time to pray. It's time to think. But it is enough time and it's unrushed that it enables me on even those busy days to enter in with the right mindset. So learning to punctuate time where you're off the hamster wheel. Right. I have a hard time getting off the hamster wheel without getting on the iPhone wheel. So yes. it's like I, I, my iPhone has become my, my punctuation. So I'm doing, 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 working, accomplishing. And then my punctuation time, which is the gap in between the words, the gap in between the sentences, my pause. Right is like when I walk in from the car, when I'm, you know, done cleaning up for dinner, when I'm done doing work and immediately it's the phone is out right. and that becomes my filler. But the problem is the, the, that punctuation, that margin is filled with this other hamster wheel, right. which involves all of the things I'm doing it's, in life. It's not really punctuation. It's not punctuation yeah. at all. So I am looking for, I have not found it, but I, I found that I, I need to fill my punctuation of time, that space. For me, I think almost needs to be an activity with my hands. Right. So I'm not on my phone. So like it could be, or, or with my body, like a walk around the block right. without my phone. Or it could be, um, I don't know, my sister has this drawing thing and she draws all the time, like in her little punctuation time, like her pause time. So I'm looking for ways to do that because one of my problems I'm finding is that, and, and I think this is probably true for everywhere, everyone, the reason we have this scarcity mentality with time is because our non-working hours, our non-working time are filled with like another hamster wheel. Right. And, and you know, you're wise to kind of find out what works for you. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, it's funny, I, I've realized in my early morning time I've shifted from um, years and years and years of journaling on my computer mm -hmm. because my handwriting is horrible and it's incredibly slow. And so it's just laborious for me to, to write. Yeah. But there came a time, you know, relatively recently where I realized that I was kind of sabotaging that punctuated time because I was on the computer. Yeah. And of course that led to being uh, at other places on the computer, you know, looking at my calendar and to-do list and everything. So I now journal in a journal, a mm -hmm. handwrite, so that it is a relatively long time before I'm getting on the computer mm -hmm. in that time. And that's, that's like your example of I walk around the block. So we have to figure that out. But punctuated times, so, you know, early morning time, I have a, a, a weekly time that is yeah. like that. And then I think times even in the middle of the day, if we learn to do that, we are feeding our brain. We are telling ourselves we have enough time. Well, and I, I've also thought about this idea of meal times being a punctuated time. Like we have to eat. But I so often multitask work when I'm eating, you know, I'm on my phone or I'm reading something or I'm on my computer or working lunch. But if we, that's an opportunity for punctuated time to have right. our meal times be really just downtime where we're not trying to do anything or we're just talking to people. So 
Ways that we can receive time, going back to this idea of happiness comes from this balance of giving and receiving. One of the ways we can receive time is learning to punctuate with time. What are some other ways that we can receive? Yeah, one that I'm, I'm really working on uh, this year is uh, learning to space time better. Okay. And by that, I mean that uh, I, I'm, I'm wired to put too much into too little time, mm -hmm. you know, to, to my head's bigger than what I'm able to accomplish. And, and I do that not only with work, but I'll do that even with, with play. Mm -hmm. So I'll line up trips that are back to back on weeks yeah. and where I'm vastly underestimating how tiring it is to get out of town and do whatever activity, even with its something fun. Mm -hmm. And so that I'll come back after, you know, multiple of these and I'll be exhausted because I had no spacing mm -hmm. in between things. So I've learned that it's really helpful for me to make sure there's plenty of space between those, those things that we do that draw energy from us. Mm -hmm. uh, and even fun things that draw energy to us. I mean, I can't go out to dinner three or four nights in a row. Even with good friends, I'll just be exhausted at the end of it. I need to space it. So I learned that spacing, again, it's another way we're telling our brain, you know, we've got plenty of time. We're not in a rush. We don't have to get everything done right now. We don't have to say yes to every opportunity mm -hmm. as if we'll never get that opportunity again. Um, we have plenty of time. Yeah, it's almost like finding a pace, your stamina yes. mm -hmm. and your pace. Like some of us are introverts, some of us are extroverts, and yeah. we need to like kind of have a little bit of a reflection time on our pace. Like I, I know you went on a lot of trips last year, and you know you could you could look at that as a mistake, or you could look at that as all of life is practice. Yeah, and you learned that you can't do that many trips. I did, yeah. And and so now you're learning your pace, you're learning your stamina. Yeah. yeah. And so I, I think finding that pace that you can maintain takes a little bit of time Absolutely. learning learning how to do that. So yeah. but I love that idea of at least naming that we need space in our calendars. So learning to punctuate, learning to put space in our day, mm -hmm. not just have it back to back. What else? What yeah. are some ways that we can receive time? Learning to linger. Yeah. Learning, I, yeah. I, I love this. I, I've realized how little I lose when I uh, schedule mm. that little bit of extra time, particularly with people mm -hmm. or that extra time for reflection, but particularly that time with people. But when, when I go to breakfast with people, I do that a lot and lunch with people or I have coffee. If, if I have more than enough time plan, it allows me to just linger. And, mm -hmm. and some of the most, the richest times that I have in any day or week mm -hmm. are those times when I'm just lingering with someone. There's no rush whatsoever. You know, mm -hmm. it's just like, gosh, I've, we've said everything. We've just relaxed and enjoyed it. We still have time. I mean, it's still not rushing to the next thing. And it feels like such a luxury. But in reality, when I look at things, I'm never sacrificing important things. The important things, because they are the important things mm -hmm. to begin with. But the important things still get done. Yeah. You know, so we can afford that abundance mentality when it comes to time. We can afford to take that time to linger with people mm -hmm. and to linger in those, those special times. And that's the slowing down. And uh, if, we, if we could embrace that, this, this whole concept of time I think is so critical because if we could learn to punctuate each day with plenty of space, if we could learn to, to pace and create a good rhythm, if we could learn to just slow down and linger and enjoy God's creation, our time with people, our happiness factor would go through the roof. 
it would go through the roof and we wouldn't miss a single thing. We wouldn't. And and I think I think you're totally right. I almost feel like this is one of the most important of the four categories we're talking about, about time, money, heart, mm -hmm. and talent, because time permeates everything. Yes. And these three things that you're talking about, learning to punctuate with time, learning to build in space and learning to linger, they almost like a pyramid, like they build on each other. So when you punctuate your more your day with a morning routine and when you punctuate your week with a planning time i know you do that on saturdays you take a couple hours in that time you learn to schedule less in your week because you've decided you're going to not chalk your calendar full you're going to create space in there you're learning for space when you have that space it enables you to linger yeah and if you had everything so close together you wouldn't be able to linger you know, I decided not to, I have been taking classes for a long time. I decided not to take a class this quarter. And before I came over here, some of the, there's two women who help clean our house and I've known them since I was a child and we're great friends. And they almost are a barometer for me about how I'm doing with time because sometimes they're there and they're always willing to like hang out and chat. And sometimes I'm like, uh, oh, uh, oh, can't, nope. Uh, you know, Hey, how you doing? That's it. But then sometimes we, you know, we have the best time just chatting about things, chatting about old times and laughing. And as I was driving over here, I was thinking, gosh, I'm in such a good mood. The flowers are so beautiful. The sun is so lovely. Why am I in just such a good mood? And I think it was because I spent 15 minutes talking to them before I came over here. And that's not something I would normally do. Normally I would be rushed. And I, I would love to add just one caveat to that learning to linger. And that's that I think lingering starts with looking, it starts yeah. with looking. And when we're lingering and enjoying something or someone, we're usually really looking at them. Like we're looking at the person, we're looking at the, like I said, the flower, you're noticing it. and. One of the things I, I know is happening when we are looking at our phones is that our, it, because it's like this one, it's this one dimensional or two dimensional thing, there's not a three dimensional aspect to it, is that we're learning that our empathy skills are going way, way down. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I have found that when I'm with someone and I'm lingering and I'm looking at them and I'm just enjoying them. And even with my kids, like half the time I'm talking to my kids, I'm not even looking at them. But when I look at them and notice them and notice their face and notice my son's crazy hair that hasn't been brushed and all of that, my it's like I'm filled with this kind of joy and empathy. Because I think as humans, we're wired to have empathy. Empathy is what connects us to each other. And that lingering and that looking are essential parts of empathy that if we are not allowing abundance of time in our life, in some ways we're suffocating our ability to have empathy. Mm -hmm. And without empathy, we're in real trouble, you know, as humans. That is so good. And I even love that you use the word suffocate because really this is the core of what this podcast mm -hmm. is about. Think about the podcast name is Space for Life. Mm -hmm. Without space, we're like hard pan. The water just goes right on. Mm -hmm. Without space, we get suffocated. We get choked. The joy, everything mm -hmm. goes. And what we're talking about, I think, as you said, it's just like we we couldn't emphasize this more mm -hmm. because it's, it's it's learning to slow down and learning to linger. And I love learning to look, mm -hmm. give undivided attention. That is where joy and happiness comes. And it's also where effectiveness and accomplishment and purpose is found. Hmm. We're not losing out when we slow down. We're not losing out when we linger. This hmm. is where the best and the most important happens. Hmm. And so this I, I do think it's it's just so absolutely critical and it's place where we all can grow and find more life and more happiness as we begin to embrace that time is abundant, is plenty. Yeah, and it does all start with that mysterious step of faith that time is abundant. 
And it's a mystery, it's a mystery because when we believe that time is abundant, we live like time is abundant, and then it is abundant. And when yes. we live mm -hmm. like time is scarce, we hamster wheel our way through life, we're rushing, and then time is scarce. And it sort of starts with that set point, almost a choice of to breath, like, okay, I have enough time today. Yeah. I have enough time this week. And if I'm starting to rush, then things need to be let go because that's not what was meant for the day. Yeah. It, it, it even goes to what we talked about last episode, that it's not only, you know, the choice of time is scarce or time is abundant. It's the choice of time is scarce or time gets multiplied. Yeah. You know, it, yeah. It, it becomes so much bigger. It's like, I have all the time in the world. So I, I this is just, I uh, feel so strongly about this. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, with this idea that life is practice, I, I have to remind myself just like in an episode like this, that I don't need to rush. It's just so great. And, you know, I'm reaching an age where this is so much more important, you mm -hmm. know, uh, you know, life is abundant. Life is abundant for me. And in time, uh, money, heart, uh, talent, and it's not running out on mm. me. And I, that just excites me to no end. Well, it's really unconventional to think about it that way. Um, I think some of your ideas, like the all of life is practice because we don't have limited time. And what we're practicing right now, the things that matter will be there in heaven, if you, you know, if you believe in heaven, the things that we're practicing right now, which is, um, you know, the things that matter, these connections we're making with people, joy, enjoying beauty, lingering, all of those things we're practicing because they are part of eternity. They're not yes. just a part of right now. You know, and even if you're a person that you're having a hard time getting your hands around this idea of eternity, there's still an abundance mentality with time that we can mm -hmm. still learn that the best of life comes in the lingering mm -hmm. and in the slowing. Um, so even if even if that's a, a little bit a of a wall, point. sticky yeah. point that you have, um, you might grow into that. Uh, I would I would hope so. But uh, there's still so much richness in life if we will take that counterintuitive trusting step of slowing down and lingering and creating space for life. That's great. Any, any other thoughts you want to add to this or our takeaways are the way we receive time is that we create punctuation of time in our week, that we create space in our calendar and that we learn to linger and look. Yeah. Any other thoughts that are takeaways? I think that's probably plenty for today. I, I would love, and I do want to sometime, cause I do, I've, I've spent so much of my life kind of learning about ways to manage and make the most of time. And, and there are a lot of practical things mm -hmm. that I think we can do to utilize our time better, but we'll save that for another time. You know, we've got plenty of time, right? Right, 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 right. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>